All eyes are on a new Star Ace release. Here's your look at the new Star Ace Ray Harryhausen Cyclops, the one-eyed giant creature, soft vinyl figure. Ray passed away in May 2013, but his legacy lives on through his collection of over 50,000 objects gathered throughout his long film career. The Foundation has been established to protect and promote the life's work of special effects pioneer Ray Harryhausen and to educate future generations on the art of stop-motion animation. Since Ray's death on the 7th of May 2013, and the acquisition of all of Ray's entire collection bound the foundation, the trustees are committed to continue Ray's hopes for the future and protecting and conserving Ray's name and his unique reputation and contribution to the world's film history. Before getting things started, I'd like to thank the folks over at Star Ace that kindly provided the sample of the Ray Harryhausen Cyclops that we could have a look at in this review. They were also kind enough to send over the deluxe version, which means not only are we going to be able to look at the Cyclops, but the rather elaborate accessories that come along with them as well. Like, for example, the thing that you're probably looking at right now, just to his far right. This rather intricate looking display stand that we'll pick up right now. And it's not until you actually pick it up that you realize there seems more weight here on the base than there is actually on the Cyclops that's going to go on top of it. Getting a closer look, though, at the details of just the base alone. Of course, you have that beach shoreline where Sinbad battles the Cyclops, and I think it's been replicated rather nicely here as a display base. Not only does the terrain look like sand, but then off to the side, you sort of see like little limbs and fallen parts of trees, like one long one here, little tiny rocks. Not to mention this rather elaborate looking rock face that's just off to the side. I feel like I could almost even spend a lot of time just talking and looking at the display stand as there's certainly a lot to take in. Even just looking at from the side here, how nicely sculpted they've done the backside here. Even though that's not really going to be the side that you're going to look at. Yes, most of the time I find that the display stands that they pack along with these deluxe versions are just as intricate as the pieces that are going to go on top of it. I also really like the way that they've used the font here for Cyclops, with, of course, the pupil in the middle of the O. Well, it's not quite in the middle, it's, it's a little bit further down. That is also replicated here on the bottom of the display base. Mind you, of course, it helps if I spin this around. Cyclops, in the same font, printed on the back, produced with the permission of the Ray and Diana Harryhausen Foundation, and Star is located down below from there. I was surprised, actually, to see that there's no felt feet provided on the bottom of the bases. That usually seems to be the case, although, because this isn't a limited run where the number is written on the bottom of it, that's usually one of the signs why companies use the felt feet. So it lifts off the surface, and if you're shifting it around at all, then you run the risk of rubbing off those numbers. Because, of course, there's nothing printed on the bottom. That's maybe one of the reasons why they didn't use the felt feet in the first place. But it's just a really nice looking display stand. And to show you what it looks like with Cyclops on top of it, very carefully putting it down, you can just take Cyclops and fit it right on top. Now, because of this size and the size of the display stand, it doesn't give you much place to work with. You kind of rotate him to the side, but of course that's going to cover off the font of Cyclops. I'd like to have the character standing right about there. And boy, does that ever look nice when you incorporate the display stand like that. Packaged along with the deluxe version, you get yourself a Sinbad and Side Sailor. That's a lot of S's that you can display along with the statue as well. The details on both of them are actually pretty good for smaller little things that you can have displayed along with the Cyclops. And it does, it helps actually as well that when you're putting them on display, it really gives a size element, it really shows how big the Cyclops is. The only downside though is because the size of the display base doesn't really give you a lot to work with clearance wise. You really kind of have to put Sinbad and the Sailor sort of underneath the Cyclops if you want to use the display stand. I mean, really, you could easily have them over here, just off to the side like this. And that works as well. It just means that they're not going to be contained onto the display base. So it kind of would have been nice if they had made the base a little bit bigger to accommodate both the Cyclops and Sinbad and the Sailor. That being said, though, once again, picking these guys up, you'll notice as well that these have holes in their hands. And there's a reasoning for that. This guy will start first. I think this is the side sailor. Why do I keep saying side sailor? He comes included with a spear. A spear for the side sailor. I'll stop doing that. You can just take the spear, 
feed it through the one hand. I find it helps as well that when you're doing it, sort of twist it to help navigate it through the holes. And then from there, you get it to the bottom hole there and fit it all the way through. And this is a, a softer, more pliable plastic, but I would still be careful of that not snapping on you. So that's that one. And then we'll take him, which I think is the Sinbad of the two. And he actually comes in clue with a little tiny sword. You take the sword and fit that into his hand. And again, if it helps at all, just twist it a little bit to get all the way through the hole there. And again, you can just display them along with it. Again, my only criticism is the fact that the display stand isn't large enough to accommodate both the Cyclops and the Sinbad and Sailor. Unless you have Cyclops brought a little further back like this, it's almost the case where if the font wasn't there, you'd be able to stand them. You know what? Let's put let's put them over here. It's just really close quarters, that's all. And especially especially where I've got the sailor right now. That's probably not the place where you'd want to have a spear. But I guess, yeah, you could display them on the stand, but the stand is just, it, it's just not big enough. It's just not really big enough to accommodate everything. Last, but certainly not least, the Cyclops statue comes with this big, giant, swinging club, which, by the way it's sculpted and painted, it looks like the Cyclops literally rooted a tree from the ground, a full-size tree, and decided to lodge all these spikes in the top of it. Because getting squashed by a Cyclops club isn't bad enough. You've got to worry about spikes on the end of it as well. The thing I like about the club is the fact that you don't have to put it into the Cyclops' hands. In fact, I was just to take this away right now and you look at it. It doesn't look like his hands have to be holding anything. Nor have they sculpted the arms where they're up, like he's supposed to be in a swinging pose. So really, you can decide for yourself to leave the club out of his hand or to have it displayed with the club for obviously the purpose of this review. We're going to take the club. It fits into this hand, by the way, because this hand here is too small of a grip. So you can't fit that in there. But you can actually even very easily navigate this into his grip. Just hold on to it a little bit as you're doing it. You don't have to have it all the way in either. And just spin this from the side so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks nice to have that with the Cyclops. Again, you don't have to have it. So again, if I just took that right out right now, it looks like that he's just got relaxed hands. So you can decide for yourself to have it with or without the club. I'm kind of leaning towards with the club myself, though. Normally, I wouldn't recommend getting this close to a Cyclops, but under the circumstance of being able to actually get in there and show you guys the very meticulous sculpting and paintwork that Starry's put into the statue, you're going to have to make the exception. Now, we have looked at other Starry's Harryhausen pieces in the past. If you haven't had yet the chance to check out those videos, feel free to give them a watch after this review. But I find of all the characters that Ray Harryhausen has been known for over the stretch of his career, the one I seem to have the softest spot for is single-eyed Cyclops here. I don't know if some of that is attached to a childhood memory of watching Sinbad when I was younger, but I always remember seeing the Cyclops walking on the beach and the sailors having to fight against him. Maybe it was a childhood memory. Whatever the case may be, I have a personal soft spot when it comes to Cyclops. You can imagine then my excitement when finally Starry's announced that they were going to be doing a Ray Harryhausen Cyclops. I think of all the ones that they've done so far for Ray Harryhausen's works, the Cyclops was the one I had the most interest in picking up. Now, looking at the finer features of this statue, there's certainly a lot to take in. I guess one of which, the main selling point of this particular statue, is it does actually have a trackball eye. Before we get, of course, to the trackball, I also want to show you he does have articulation in the mouth, so you can open and close that, showing a very wet-looking tongue on the inside and individual, almost rock-shaped teeth also discolored on the inside of his mouth. So he does have that as a function, and you can open and close it. But the other thing, of course, mentioning already the trackball eye, go ahead and just remove the lower mouth. When you remove it, you'll see that there's four pegs, and they fit into four equally sized holes. There also seemed to be a magnet there too as, as well, because when I put the mouth really close to the face, it almost as if it sucks it in like a black hole, and it really stays in place. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just remove it. I'm going to put that to the side. I know what you're going to think. He's going to forget about it. There's no way I'm going to forget about it. Of course, he's missing a mouth now. Anyways, if you look at the inside, it's kind of hard to see because it's so black in there. There is actually a joystick. Let me see if I can get my finger in there so I can pull it out just a little bit. I don't know if you guys will even be able to see it, but there is, take my word for it, a joystick on the inside, and that will be able to move the eyeball around. Let's get my finger on it here. There we go. 
You can have it down, you can have it up, forward and back. Basically all the full rotation the eyeball is capable of doing, providing you can actually get your finger in there and touch to the joystick. There it is right there. You can probably see it. it looks like a little white tonsil. So that is really already a nice selling point. I don't even think the statue necessarily needed to have a joystick. The statue's sculpting and the paint alone, I think is more than impressive admission. I think it's simply just having the trackball eyes, basically the icing on a cake. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and take the articulated mouth. We can put that back in. Just fit it against those pegs. We'll fit it into those pegs. And again, I feel like there's a magnet holding things in place as well. Looking at certainly the sculpt work on the face, it looks like he's made of stone in some of the areas, like his head here. We have really rough looking skin. Painted in some areas dark, further down here on the bottom of his chin, and of course the area around his mouth as well. It kind of looks like he's got stubble. Slightly lighter brushed paint here on the front of his nose. Very dark brown paint around the areas of his eye. Of course, the Cyclops also has the big rooted horn that sticks out from the top of his forehead. And I think that's also been painted rather nicely too. Now, when we look at the head sculpt, it has a much more rougher looking surface to it. And yet, when you look at the rest of the body, or at least this part of the body, the only way I can describe this, and I'm hoping that you guys can follow along with me, is when you have really wet mud. Well, that's usually what mud tends to be. It's wet. But when mud st starts to dry under a really hot summer day, it tends to crack and leave these little crack formations. And I almost feel like the lower, at least this part of his body, looks like it's almost dried, cracked mud. If that makes any sense. Um, the sculpt work on the arms and just like the torso as a whole is fantastic. I love the little wrinkles on his neck, for example. Little pulls of skin on the side of his body. He's even got like little veins, veins on his biceps. All these protrusions of what almost seems to be like warts sticking out from the shoulder, the forearm, also into his hand as well. Spinning around to the back so you can see there's a lot of good color happening here. Starts primarily with like a beige, yellowish beige, but then over top of it, they brush like a darker gray. There's a few little areas that you can kind of see there that are brushed with like a, almost like a red paint. You can see a little more of that red paint right around here. I like that it's not just one color. Now, I think in the movie, actually, he's a little bit more of a reddish color than this. They've decided to actually go a little more of a creamer color. And actually, I think it works pretty good with the sculpting of it. Continuing the trend of really nice looking sculpting, of course, we get to the lower half of him. And this is kind of more mimicking a centaur. Not only is the sculpt really good, but also, the, again, those layers of color. It's the layers of color that really does give it a level of depth to it. Almost as if you'd be able to run your fingers through the fur. You've got the more darker, rusted red. I don't know why I'm drawing with so much attention to it on his groin area, but very much a darker red. Some browns added in there as well. And of course, the main thing, the, the star attraction here, is these little brushings, of almost like a very orangey yellow paint over top of it. It's that level of paint that adds the contrast that I really like about the statue. I mean, even though he looks, from, from at a glance, really, he looks like he's a very muddy looking character. It's not until you really get him up close like this do you really see there's very fine paint applications that Star has put to this piece. And then, of course, we can bring in the statue base once again. Just put him down. We'll put the base down here. And then we'll do our best to kind of bring Cyclops as far back as we can get him. Just because I want to free up a little more space if I possibly can. To bring in once again Sinbad. Get him right there. And we can also bring in the Sailor. Get him right there. There we go. And I guess the last thing we can also do is put the club in his hand too. And I gotta say, bringing the camera up a little bit, that is a really nice looking rendition of the Sinbad Cyclops. Again, initially I may have thought that the display base was too small. I guess maybe it's just enough uh, just enough clearance. If you have like the cyborg, cyborg, cyclops further back, then I guess it does a lot enough space on the front that you can have Sinbad and the Sailor, and it's not <laughs> it's not too close of a quarter when it comes to that spear being, well, uncomfortably close to the Cyclops. I do really like the way that this piece came together, and the beauty of also getting the deluxe version of him is the fact that you are getting the display base, and you are also getting the little side figurines that could be displayed along with him. Not only does it bring a little bit more to viewing it on a display shelf, but it also gives them a proper scale. You get a better idea and a better feel for how big the Cyclops is when you have it displayed with smaller, regular-sized humans. 
Earlier into the review of this statue, I may have said that the display stand was way too small, but I guess now looking at it, if you do have the Cyclops far enough back on the display base, then there is enough clearance to put Sinbad and the Sailor in front of him, and it doesn't look like it's too close of a quarter. Certainly when it comes to displaying this guy, I would definitely recommend if you guys are looking to get the Ray Harryhausen Cyclops, go the route of getting the deluxe version because yeah, you're going to be getting the benefit of having the base and the extra little figurines that you can have displayed along with it. It's not to say necessarily that just by itself the Cyclops is disappointing. Quite the contrary. The coloring, the sculpting, and the fact that he does have the trackball eye is something really I wasn't even expecting, nor really necessarily needed on the statue. But the very idea that you can get in there with your finger and move around the joystick to move around his eye. Man, that's a nice touch. Really glad to see that Starry's incorporated that. Now, Cyclops, as far as I know, is available right now if you guys are looking to pick this one up and add it to your collection. A big thank you again to the folks over at Starries that provided this sample of the Ray Harryhausen Cyclops one-eyed giant creature. I'm not just, I'm not labeling him as a one-eyed, he actually says that in the back of the packaging. The Cyclops one-eyed giant creature, soft vinyl figure statue. If you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on and make sure yes, yes, yes. You're coming back to this channel on a regular basis because there will be more statue reviews and more Star Ace reviews lined up and coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.